All right. Okay, so I uh, asked a lovely question on karma, and the Course in Miracles says we're all innocent, you know, just to get that correction. I mean, I always quote this thing from Course in Miracles, and I, I often say it over and over again. Like in the early lessons, the Course in Miracles, 365 lessons, they're also available freely online. If you go to, I think, acm.org, you can get all the lessons free, otherwise you download apps or buy the book. Um, so it's um, whereas the twelve steps for me is um, is a great introduction to spirituality, and I think it is. You know, I think if anyone's new to spirituality, doing the twelve steps is one of the best ways to get an introduction to spirituality and get a lot of clearing done. But I, the Course in Miracles takes it up a notch to the next level, where we're actually trying to get. Um, totally clear of the ego to get conscious contact with, with, with God. So and now, um, even though, you know, from more of a sort of a Christian type view where we talk about, which is also good, the, um, in the, you know, Buddha talked about karma and Krishna talked about karma in past lives as well. And how do you square karma and I talk a lot about karma. I also talk a lot about non-duality or enlightenment or experiencing that, uh, that, shall we say, space prior to when one isn't identified with thinking any longer. So, now the idea with karma. So The Course in Miracles says one of the, one of the few early lessons in A Course in Miracles is God is the love in which I forgive you. So if uh, I don't know, like uh, if if someone if I'm having trouble with the person in a twelve step meeting, I can one of the early lessons is God is the love in which I forgive you. So that's what I call a dualistic. You know, there's terminology we call it non-dual, dualistic uh, perception of the world. There's a me, then there's a God, and then there's another person. So I'm, I, there's me invoking God to forgive the person I don't like in this twelve step group. So that's like a there's. There's three of us that's in, com in communication. Me, there's a me separate from God, and there's also me separate from the other person, which I'm praying to God to, to help me forgive them. So, but later, as you get to the later lessons, there's a, there's a blurb on forgiveness right towards the end of the lessons in A, co uh, in a Course in Miracles. And it says you'll actually realize, you know, once you achieve this spiritual state, that there was nothing ever to forgive. You know, it's almost like it's like an illusion. There is, you actually have the spiritual awareness now. There is nothing to forgive later on. So that for me is now, we're now in the experience of non-duality and the recognition that there isn't a me in separation to God and another. So I'm having to use the me in separate to you and calling God to help me forgive you through a prayer. Now to realize there's a oneness. There's a spiritual oneness and the idea of uh, me being in separate now that the spiritual experience of spiritual oneness exists, there is no longer the experience of separation, um, then that seemed to be totally an illusion. Now, you know, I, I really like Buddha. You know, Buddha talked a lot about um, uh, enlightenment. Well, I, I paraphrase. I'm not an expert on Buddha, I have to say, but I just paraphrase it the way I sort of see it. Um, you know, enlightenment is the way out of reincarnation. You know, having to come back over and over again to this place, you know, because you haven't learnt all the lessons, you can, you know, or or I or you know Jesus, you know, I, I paraphrase Jesus, <laughs> you know, like you don't have to come here if you just take me as your savior and try and love your neighbor as yourself, uh, you know, you'll get you'll get I'll give you a ticket to heaven, so you don't have to come back down here again uh, and. Uh, and uh, or go to that other place <laughs> down below. <laughs> I think I've visited that place in this world. But um, mm -hmm. um, so okay, so karma. So so what does that mean? Now, if you do, if you, you know, we we sort of like talk about the observer here, uh, and uh, and the, I'll take two lessons from A Course in Miracles, which are my favourite because I'm a, I like non-duality teachings, getting the spiritual experience of what I am. Uh, when I've stopped identifying with my thoughts and my body, and then getting this experience, different to concept, thinking, a thinkingness and an experience is different. So what, this spiritual experience of being beyond the thinking and the body, and, that, and being beyond being in separation to God and others. <clears throat> 
So in that spiritual experience, that spiritual awakening, it's quite obvious there is no me in separation to a God in separation to another individual in separation. So it makes, you know, it makes uh, sense to me when Buddha said, like, as soon as you spiritually experience that you are not the body, you're not your thoughts, that there is no separation, also you transcend the lessons of this domain. You know, it's like it's obvious that the universe may keep spitting you out into this place because you haven't transcended the idea of separation. You haven't transcended. You still think there's a you that can get angry at other people or get angry at God. So you haven't had that spiritual awakening yet to realize that uh, as, a, and as a spiritual experience that there is no me in separation to another. And the whole idea of a me personally being angry at another person in separation is an illusion. See, that, that dissolves. You can't. Because you're not identified with the body and your personal story any longer. And so you would perceive anyone else or you would witness anyone else who's getting resentments to be suffering, uh, suffering separation anxiety, shall we say, believing they are the body and they're thinking. So, um, so for me, it's like, uh, you know, you're destined, there's a high likelihood of coming back into the body and feeling identified with the story, the individualized story of the body, you know, like I had a bad upbringing and had bad parents and uh, I don't like you because, uh, you know, of your hairstyle, whatever it is, you know, so that can't really happen uh, when, you, when you're spiritually awake because you now realize you're experiencing the spiritual oneness and something beyond separation <clears throat> as a spiritual experience. So. And also that pull, you know, my, one of my spiritual teachers often said, this is purgatory, you know, uh, there's a high likelihood. The, the great thing about purgatory is that it's a great place to learn forgiveness. Uh, because, um, you know, you're forgiving yourself, you're forgiving God as you understand God, uh, and you're forgiving others. And when does that lesson stop? When do you not have to keep coming back into a place or experiencing um, you know, this idea of having to forgive myself, others, or, or my perception of God over and over again. When will when that collapse? And maybe, when have I transcended this world so I don't even have to come back here? You know, either I get transported to the heavenly domain, or I don't even have to come back to any kind of dualistic domain ever again. So there's a slight difference between, you know, I won't go, that's not, you know, that's the question. So, um, so you can see, like, now here's the thing. You know, from an, from an enlightened perspective, from the witnesser of the body and the thoughts, it's obvious there's nothing to forgive. And there is, you can't pick up a personal story because you're not your personal story. And you can't attach to an attack from another inner body because you know that there, there isn't such a thing. Even though you might witness what's going on in the world, you're not a, you, know, you can see it from a more compassionate uh, witnessing field in that it's not real. You see, so the Course says, like, it's an illusion, it's not real. That's true. Once you're in a more evolved space, you realize it's not real. However, karma, if you take on the karmic view, and I would agree with the karmic view, like, if you are attached, if you're identified with your body and your story, and what your parents did to you, and the politicians of this world, then the experiencing in duality feels real. It does feel very real. You know, someone steps in your toe. <clears throat> You know, and you tell them it's an illusion. <laughs> you know, he's like, I don't believe it's an illusion. I feel like a pain in my foot. You know? <laughs> so, so it's not my experience that this is an illusion, or you know, or that person just called me a twat. So, I don't want to kill them. So, you know, it's not. It's the experiencing is very uh, visceral. In but from the course point of view, if you haven't had that spiritual experience and you're in that place. There, it calls it, an and from that place it is an illusion, but from the I'm in, I'm my body, I'm my story, positionality, this is real, and the idea of being in the witnesser and those advanced spiritual states seems like an illusion. So it's practical then to teach people who are identified with their body and their personal stories about karma or forgiveness. <clears throat> you know, that, uh, that uh, you know, until you forgive. When you forgive something, hmm, because Course talks a lot about forgiveness, or that all my thoughts are meaningless, or I'm not my body, I'm free, for I'm as God created me, or all my thoughts are meaningless. So these are transcending the hooks to being in separation. If you didn't identify with your thoughts at all, 
they would disappear. You wouldn't, have, you wouldn't latch on to them. And therefore, your whole personal story would be gone, you know, if you weren't latching on to your thoughts. Then, you know, the only thing you could latch on to is your body. So if you are identifying with your physical body and anything that's going on in the physical body, then again, you'll be hooked into a place of separation and location. <clears throat> and then you'll make the automatic projection <clears throat> onto others, well, if I'm a body, then other people are bodies. That automatic projection goes. Or if I'm my thoughts, other people are their stories as well, because I'm my story. So that automatically gets projected out until you clear that. So, so from a dualistic point of view, karma is real, or you need to forgive to get to that place where there's nothing left to fear. If you've forgiven, you know, what is 100% forgiveness or radical forgiveness means that there is nothing left to hold on to, can't repeat you can't hold on to. And what if you couldn't hold on to anything? You couldn't hold on to your body, you couldn't hold on to your personal story, and you couldn't hold on to any idea of resentment against anyone else. <coughs> then you wouldn't have a story. You would be in that spiritual awakening place where you're beyond, uh, you're beyond separation. So, um, so karma, so enlightenment, once you're enlightened, uh, if, if, if you were still perceiving the body, you might be on to the next place, you know, not having to be in this place. But if you're witnessing the body, and you're witnessing everything that unfolds in life, and you're not your body or your personal story, then you will, of course, witness that other people are not their bodies or their stories. And actually, whatever happens to this body and other people's bodies, there would be a, a higher knowing or a higher awareness, shall we say, that this is an illusion, it's not real. Other people who are identified with their stories and their bodies are thinking, well, I'm dying. Uh, you know, I have to eat this donut now because I can't not eat this donut, <clears throat> whatever it is. And they're at the bondage of their separation and the programming of their separation. And so they're now limited by this software which is driving them by this, these limited programs. So, uh, which can lead to, you know, um, the more you're identified with the, the story and the body, the more these things, these negative things start to happen, like addiction, suicidal thoughts, uh, wanting to self-destruct, because one is so cut off from the light, the, the light of consciousness, that inner peace and stillness, that presence, that oneness, so cut off from that place that the ego inflates so much that, uh, you know, this, this peace and love is so absent that the programs of addiction uh, and uh, extreme negative thinking start to operate. And thereby one is monstrously driven by the opposite of having extreme spiritual connection, which is the darkness, which is essentially these negative programs dominate. And they create what, you know, I, you, know you could call it bondage, entrapment or addiction, whatever you want to call it. But uh, the idea that you get peace or relief from something in the world start to dominate very, very strongly. So the idea that emerges deep darkness and depression uh, or gloom on the inside, but if you do this thing on the outside, you'll get relief. And this then becomes almost addictive to the gates of death. And I went there. So, you know, I was, uh, you know, food addiction uh, and extreme workalism, other addictions took me, you know, to kidney failure, uh, suicidal places, self-destruct. Um, so that's the thing of, you know, you're so dark on the inside that you want light to come in, a brief glimpse of light from food or from work or from people or from people's affirmation. So, and you get this, you know, and I, I will talk about it, but when you're cut off, um, I even forgot what I'm talking about, the question was, but it's about uh, karma, oh yeah, karma and innocence. So when you're cut off from the innocence, which is the light of God, you know, which is the oneness, the experience of this infinite peace and presence that is with me everywhere I go. And the thoughts go silent and there's pure presence. When you're cut off from that and you're in the thinking and the body, then you get monstrously dr driven by these programs to get payoff from the world. If I could only have that glass of, uh, you know, alcohol, that would give me a temporary blip of relief, you know. Or if I could have alcohol non-stop, maybe I could find a way out of this world. You know, so I can be happy all the time. You know, I would be like, you know, if I could get an unending supply of food, make sure I've got an unending supply of food and sugar, 
you know, uh, God forbid there'd be a donut shortage in the yeah. UK, you know, I'd have to move to another country and go like, are there any donuts in Greece or in Croatia or whatever it is, you know, because, or in Sweden, because I think we're having a donut shortage in, in the UK because you, you, I'm just driven because it's too horrible to experience what's going on without the relief of, of that, uh, the next uh, donut or the next drink. So what happens when you're, when you're cut off from the innocence, shall we say, you use the word innocence, or the light, or this peace, which means I don't need anything from the world. I don't need to go to the future, the past, I don't need to go to a donut, I don't need to go to a vodka, I don't need to go to a girlfriend. Everything is fine now, and there is nothing else I need to get, do, think, or grab from the outside to get relief. There is, it's enough right now, and will be enough forever. There's no urge. You know, the, like the seven deadly sins or the, the defects, the four defects of character are like it's not enough now. You know, I need to control somebody to feel enough. I need that donut to feel enough. I need you to like me to feel enough. So all of the whole ego and separation and the, the need, the urge, you know, to grab something, to get something, to eat something, to drink something, to get someone's approval, that can only exist in du duality or the, or the disconnection from the innocence or the light of God or the oneness. Because now is enough in God's consciousness when you're out of the duality or, or being attached to your story, your ego story and your body means automatically separation. Now, so if you're only very slightly attached to your story and, and your body, then mostly you, you, you're okay now. It's mostly I feel quite chilled out right now. But to the extent that the thinking and that identification with the personal story goes, then you, you, one is driven by monstrous, monstrous ideas to try and get relief from the world. And they can become addictive. My story is one of addiction. And then that addiction can lead to insane things where you're eating and eating and eating until you get kidney failure. And then the doctors tell you, which is part of my story, You've got kidney failure, here's a list of foods you have to avoid or you'll get a heart attack. High potassium and bananas. And this is true, they let me out of the hospital and I bought a bag of bananas. And I uh, ate the bag of bananas and they gave me a blood test and they called me back from the, on the mobile. Come into A&E, you're about to have a heart attack. You know, so is that, I mean, no sane person would do that, but when you're driven when you're driven beyond, uh, beyond all reason and rationality to sort of suicidally self-destruct. But you know, there, there was like, to not do that would be, that's the only hope I've got to grab that food. Otherwise the feelings, uh, the things that would come up would be too dark to face. So um, karma, so car what is karma? karma? Karma quite simply is your ego programs and the repressed feelings behind the little packages of karma. You could say from, like, even, we don't have to go to past lives because people may find that too difficult. Even from this lifetime, you know, if I'm angry at my mother uh, at uh, three years old for not buying me donuts when I told her to go out and do some shopping, you know, so <laughs> I would have developed a... Donuts. <laughs> I would have, I would have now have a new, <laughs> a new karmic package that I have to clear. You know, I now have a lot of repressed anger and a program of anger against my mother. So there's a little thought program or, or set of belief systems and a, and a package of repressed anger. Because as soon as she said, like, I'm not buying the donuts, I'd have probably just raided the biscuit tin and not felt my feelings. So there'd be repressed anger and some programs, like bad mother, and anyone that looks like my mother is also bad, and probably, you know, anyone who's in a, an authority figure is also bad. All authorities are bad, all mother figures are bad, anyone who looks like me. So all these programs, you know, go in there. And then, you know, and then I'm angry because there's a strike on the trains, you know. So London Transport is bad. But because London Transport is bad, I'm going to eat some donuts to get away from London Transport being bad. And now suddenly I'm okay, even though London Transport are bad and putting on a strike. I've just eaten my donuts and I'm mellowed out. And now I have another karmic program package of repressed feelings mm -hmm. and beliefs against. So all my karma, like every time I go on London transport, I have to eat a donut. Every time I, I see a woman that looks like my mother, I have to eat a donut. So these becomes all the karma 
And every time I go and see someone that looks like my mother, I go on a train. For some reason, I have to eat a donut. I don't know why, but these are my, this is my karma. Until I clear my karma, all my karma, um, the world will keep pressing buttons, you know, until I can get on a... When I can get on a train and not be angry and not eat a donut, that means transcendence of my karma with London Transport. If I can see a woman that looks motherly and, and, uh, and not have a resentment, that means I've transcended my karma with anyone that looks like my mother, you know, and I don't have to eat a donut any time I see someone that looks like my mother. So, so these are my karmic... Did you see my karmic programs? And if I can go through all of life and feel peaceful and happy and present and not have to eat a donut and not pick up a resentment or anger or anything, it means I'm enlightened, you know. And actually, probably what Buddha said, you don't have to come back. Well, Jesus, if I loved everyone like my brother and I actually realized the world's an illusion, I mean, why would God send me back in here? I mean, do I, do I need some more lessons? Are you okay to speak on camera? Yep, yeah, go on. What if... Um it's come in the sense that you've done something to someone else yeah. and, and let's say you feel terrible about it you say you did it years ago um, and then you can't forgive yourself or, or whatever but then you, you've created karma for yourself because you know that's, that's right so, yeah that's the guilt you know the guilt of course says you've done nothing to you're innocent what you think you did, you didn't actually do. You, you've harmed... Yeah. No, I mean, you, you said that you harmed them, but you haven't forgiven yourself, is that what you say? Um, or you didn't harm them, sorry, mm, say it again. Yes, you were right, the, the former. Mm. You, you, you feel you've done something to harm another, Okay. and then the oh. course says... Mm. You're, oh. you're beating yourself up for, okay. uh, yeah. for nothing. Oh, you've got, yeah. to, you've got to recognize the difference between applying a tool and being in the enlightened state. That's mm. two, different, okay. two different realms. Like if you go to a place and they say, forgive everyone, forgive your brother, for they know not what they do. Uh, they say, like, if you want salvation, forgive your brother, they know not what you do. Just keep doing that. Or if you go to another place and they say, look, just pray for this person, they're a sick person, uh, and just pretend they're a sick person and just keep praying to forgive them. Or if you go to another place and you do the Course in Miracles and it says, like, do these 365 lessons, like God is the love in which I forgive you, well, and you're asking me, well, why would you have to do this? Because we're all in, you're, you're speaking from an unforgiven place. You're speaking from the place of you haven't yet experienced the awakening that the tool is trying to get you to experience. Mm. So you do. If you're feeling suffering or, or separation, all spiritual tools which are relatively good need to be applied before you experience. So there's a difference between spiritual experience, spiritual awakening, mm. and understanding something intellectually. So if I say we're all innocent, this world is an illusion, and, uh, and uh, so if you just believe me and intellectually get what I've said, then you, you're fixed. You, don't, you won't have a problem again. It won't work. So like in a 12-step program, you have to have a sponsor. You have to apply the step 10s and the prayers on a daily basis to make sure you have to, to get to a place where you feel Peace, peaceful and whole and don't want to act out on your addiction. Or in the Course in Miracles, even though it does say the world's an illusion and there is no separation, there is no me and you and God in separation, but just to intellectually get that is not going to, you know, you're still going to be angry at the train driver and the person who stepped on your foot, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you're not in the experience of an enlightened, you know, of, enlightened, of an enlightened experience. Mm -hmm. So... So you can only speak from that place when you are that. Mm. But unfortunately for anyone who's... for So I try, you know, and it's a good question because, you know, I can say that the world's an illusion and uh, uh, there is no such thing as separation. There is nothing to forgive. Innocence is all there is or ever has been since time immemorial. So don't worry about anything. And yet you pick up a resentment and eat a donut after you leave the group. So unless you're enlightened in this group, which is also possible, uh, miracles are possible. So if you start, or if you get the observer, and you can maintain the observer, i.e., you're not your body, your thoughts, or any of the things that come up within your body or your thinking. If you're able to maintain that, you wouldn't be driven by the body or the thinking or the urges within the body. You'd have transcended that. And so, um, and so now the, when you are when you haven't transcended it, let's say I still. You, let's say I go to your house and steal your donuts or your biscuit tin. 
Why well, are you not looking? And um, I would, you know, and I'm obviously I'm in my body and I'm, I, I'm thinking of how I can steal your, your biscuits. And uh, you go to the toilet, I take all the biscuits and sort of say like, and then you say, look, these biscuits have gone missing. And I say, it wasn't me. I think there's someone popped into the house when we weren't missing and just <laughs> yeah. ran, it, ran it off. So I will then feel guilt. Mm. I will feel guilt, you know, even though I might rationalise, oh, she, she won't notice the biscuits gone. I will feel guilt because I'm still in separation. That wasn't a thing that you do from a place of innocence and wholeness. If I'm an enlightened place, I don't need to steal your biscuits. You know, I wouldn't need to steal your biscuits. And I'd have the spiritual awareness that that's... I, why would I want to steal your biscuits if I'm blissed out in, in spiritual nirvana anyway? I wouldn't want to take your biscuits. I've got something far better than a, than a biscuit fix from your biscuits. So it's like it's not even going to enter my hand. But if I am in my body and my thinking and thinking about your biscuit tin, then I will steal your biscuits. But then, then I will take on, as the Course says, guilt. Guilt then leads to further separation. Because on a spiritual level, I'm aware I've stolen your biscuits and you're suffering. You, know, you have to go out and buy some more biscuits. So, so I will have the guilt. And that guilt ties me greater into separation. Now I'll have even more guilt. And the reason I'm having more biscuits is because the more guilt I have, the more biscuits I'll eat. You know, because that's true. You see, you go down. The more you become, the more down you go with guilt and unforgiveness, you go down in the levels of consciousness. And then your addiction increases. So now your head, even though you don't know, will say, yesterday, yesterday I was only having five biscuits a day, but today I'll have seven biscuits. And then, you know, two years down the line, I'll be you know, I'll be robbing bakeries. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be the, I will, I will be the UK donut robber. You know, <laughs> you know it'll be hot Scotland Yard will probably be on, on my case. So, <laughs> to get that relief because I'll have so much guilt. <laughs> you guys think I'm joking, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that you wouldn't be raiding donut factories. <laughs> but, uh, and would, you, would the karma also be that then I will steal your biscuits because you stole my biscuits? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, this is a great video. But <laughs> yes, it does tend to happen yeah. because as soon as you apply, <clears throat> you see, this is the thing with spiritual work. Um, when you start to apply spiritual work, say, look, I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be a good boy now. Um, and you stop trying to raid everyone's biscuit tins, usually, the, usually things start to come. In a 12-step in a program, we, call, we say we need to make amends as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, otherwise, if you don't make amends as quickly as possible with every, everything you've done, uh, you know, Buddha would, you know, like Buddha might say, do good deeds. Or a 12-step group might say, like, say sorry as quickly as possible and make amends for everything, all harms you've done to all other people. That's why 12-step programs, I think, are so powerful. You know, I have to go back to your, knock on your door and say, look, um, I'm so sorry I stole your biscuits. And either I'm happy to, to give you, refund you the money or buy you a new biscuit tin. Or if you think I deserve it and won't report me to the police, I'm happy for you to do that. But I do sincerely apologize and I would like to make it up to you in any way possible. So that then clears the guilt, yeah, and also clears my karma. <coughs> uh, but if I just sort of said, stop stealing biscuits, then, you know, if you look at, uh, I've talked a lot on this, I have to, I'll, I'll go for another question, but yes, you do start to get people stealing your biscuits. You know, even though you're pretending to be nice now, a lot of bad can happen. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah. It seems like if you release the guilt, you release the karma. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's an inside job, really. Yeah. It's an inside job. <laughs> if you release the guilt and you transcend your separation, nothing can harm you anyway. Even if someone did steal your biscuits, it wouldn't bother you. Mm, okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could go on. I, I suppose it's great.